Hi, Dave here from Road CC. We're at the Cycle Show at the NEC, and I'm here with Jamie Burrows and Andy Smallwood from Ribble Cycles. Now, you've probably heard of Ribble Cycles if you've been a cyclist for any length of time. Um, if you've been a cyclist for a long time, you probably know them as a very road-oriented brand. You know, they make a lot of good value, racing bikes, training bikes. Um, but we're in a new, a new moment for, for Ribble now. Something new is happening. Andy's come on board, and with Jamie, they've, they've worked up a whole new range. So I'm here to talk with them about what they're doing with the brand and the new bikes that they've got. So thanks for coming on there. Uh, coming on the Road CC YouTube channel. Welcome to that and tell me about um, tell me about your journey with Ribble. I mean, you were saying earlier that your journey with Ribble starts a long time ago in terms of in terms of like knowing about the brand. Yeah, so my, my journey with Ribble started 25 years ago. Um, I was a uh, aspiring young racer looking to buy my uh, next race bike and scouring through the uh, the small ads at the, in the back of a uh, the, the magazines at the time. And uh, yeah, I ended up buying a, a rear steel Ribble 653 road frame, uh, custom coloured it to match my team kit, um, built it up with my Campag chorus groups at the time, it was only nine, nine speed back in the day. But yeah, they were really proud of this rib, my, uh, my custom coloured team Ribble bike I was, yeah. And uh, yeah, so little did I know that 25 years down the line I'd be uh, still here now talking to you guys around uh, launching our new product range. So Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And you've been with the company about a year? Yeah, just a year now. So yes. this is the first kind of range that you've brought through the the, um, the company and you know we're we're seeing something a little bit different from Ribble so we're used to them as a very road orientated brand um, quite sort of value based but now we're seeing like a much broader range of bikes so from your point of view I mean what, what are the standout bikes for this season what are the things that you really want to show us yes yeah, so, so value has always been really important to the Ribble brand uh, but for now it's now it's, it's, uh, yeah we want to offer a value to a much broader range of um, cyclists so it's giving cyclists a much better experience across the board now as well and it's not just around that core, that core road price point we always used to, we always hit it's now extending it up but also bringing it down and also going wider as well uh, in terms of the product range that we're offering now um, it spans right away we've, we've really we've re reinvented and reinvigorated our core road offering uh, right away from entry level aluminium bikes all the way up to the real top end uh, carbon bikes that could win the Tour de France it, it, it's a real broad road range now also diversified now into the e-road platform which is what we see here and uh, this is a real, real, probably one of the stars of our, of our new range. So this is brand new for you. Not done an e-bike before? Never done an e-bike before, no. Okay. So talk us through this bike then. So yeah, when we embarked on the e-bike project, um, we, we really understood the, the, what, what fundamentally made a great road bike. Um, so essentially a great road bike has to feel right, has to be super light, has to be really responsive. And, and, and therefore any e-road bike had to be the same. But crucially from an electric perspective, we also really got the fact that Power assist could be a real benefit to many different types of rider. Whether you're a the rider who's uh, wanting to go further, wanting to uh, go up more climb, do more climbing, uh, is intimidated by that, or just just wants to have a um, a different ride experience. Uh, we think we feel that power assist on a uh, road bike uh, has a real benefit there. But crucially, has to be super light, has to feel like and look like a road bike, and that's what we feel like we've achieved here. Because um, like I said, frame weight, 11, uh, bike weight is from 11 kilos, so probably one of the lightest e-road bikes in the world, if not the lightest. Yeah. And yeah, so it's a, a really credible product. Fantastic, and built around a, a frame design that you're kind of running across a number of bikes. I mean, the look of it and the kind of tube shapes of it are going across a range of bikes that we'll see through through the video. But this is a, a new design for you? Yeah, so Jamie's our head of product. He's worked tirelessly on the frame designs and no, no stone has been left unturned and attention to detail is phenomenal. So tell me about the particular kind of details of this frame because it's obviously something new for you. Yeah, so we, we started with the, S, the Endurance SL is, is the platform. Right. As you've seen across uh, road, we've got um, road uh, disc and caliper versions in a super light version, which is uh, just under 800 grams sort of frame and then the standard version, which is around a kilo. Mm -hmm. That was the first bike to have been developed, along with the optional integrated uh, cockpit, fully integrated, you know, no cables on show. Um, and we, we formed full CFD testing on that platform so we could get a real good combination of weight and aerodynamics. And then once we finalised that, we then took that platform across to the e-bike and tried to keep it as, uh, as close as possible. Okay, and obviously they had to make some changes because of the way that 
any bike works, you need a battery in there. I mean, the only big change is, is the down tube slightly changes shape just for the battery housing. Okay, but other than that, the geometry of the bike is the same? It's, it's the, the same as the uh, Endurance SL and so SLR we're talking, series. Yeah, yeah, we're talking about a kind of endurance geometry, but a far, sort of fast endurance geometry. For yeah, it's kind of, it's, it's, it is a cross between race geometry and a sportive geometry. I'd say closer to race. That's nice. very interesting bike, and you're using um, the e-bike motion system here. That's, yeah. that's right. Yeah, it's a Spanish system mm -hmm. uh, that Willie use, and I think uh, Albert also use. So mm -hmm. yes. it's 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 certainly gaining some traction in in the road market, and it's it's a system that I've used. That I really enjoy um, out on the road, and yeah, this is a really interesting bike. So 11 kilos in this build. Obviously, this is a this is money no object build. Yeah. Yeah. But how? What? What's what's the pricing? Like? I mean, how? What point do they start? So the range starts at three thousand pounds, and for that three thousand pounds, you get the same e-bike system as you see here, uh, but it comes with a Shimano one hundred and five hydro group set, and then goes right the way up to full full Tegra or Tegra Di two, all the way up to the e-tap version with carbon wheels you see here, topping out at around about five and a half k. So five and a half for this build here. Yep. Doesn't really seem too bad, all things considered. Yeah, well, it's no. just, it's, 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 one, one of the philosophies at Ribble is about trying to give customers a better product but make it very accessible. That's what that's a, a key point of difference for us. So that's the new Ribble SLE e road bike uh, from three grand up to about five and a half for this for this top dollar build. Uh, we're going to go and look at another build bike now, which is the uh, CGR. So let's go over here. So Andy, CGR not a new bike for you in no. terms of the in terms of the range, but these are new models. So you've yeah. expanded the range. Yeah, we have. Yeah, so CGR cross gravel and road, very much a very versatile frame platform, which has been a staple of the, of the Ribble product range for a couple of years now. Um, but so much so that we've uh, it's, it's gained great traction. So we've really expanded the range to include four um, frame platforms now, four different materials. We've got the aluminium which this bike here replaces the existing CGR. We've now got a carbon version as well, which is what you see here. And we've also got a 725 steel, Reynolds 725 version, and we've got a top of the range titanium version as well in the range. So yeah, a very broad spectrum of materials um, covering what is a very versatile bike. And in terms of the kind of geometry and what they're designed for, they're a, they're a, they're a one platform, yeah. but in four materials. So geometry is very similar across the, the materials. Yeah, it's a very much endurance geometry, isn't it, Dewey? Dewey? Yeah. And Jamie, this is the new carbon version, which obviously, I mean, we can see the it, from the tube shaping and from the frame design, it's it's got similarities to the SLE that we've just seen. Right. Um, talk me through what you've done with this bike. Yes, yeah, so basically, again, we've followed on from the foot. It forms part of the SL platform, and you know, as we said earlier, it's taken the alloy version, which is already quite popular. Obviously, we've redone the alloy version and and made it into a carbon version. As Andy said, the key point is the versatility of it, particularly with the choice of wheel and tyre options. So we can run 700c um, by up to 45 mil and guards, or a two inch um, tyre on a 650b wheel. Okay, and these have got a, what, a 47 mil? 47 mil. 650, yeah. yeah. Still with plenty of room there, you can see. Yeah, plenty of room for guards. Yeah. Um, and obviously, one of the key things which is unusual for a bike which is obviously a gravel bike. Um, is the integrated cockpit. Yeah. You know, so we've taken a potentially off-road bike and made it pretty aero and uh, certainly, um, you know, upgraded yeah, so it, yeah. Obviously, you've got the aero cockpit here, you've got the same down tube and, and seat tube shapes as you have on, yep. the, on the SLE, so there's a lot of aero stuff going on. Um, do you, do you quantify that? Do you wind tunnel test these bikes or is it more of just a... Yeah, we have done, obviously, it all started with the standard road platform. Yeah. And then, obviously, to keep the family feel as well. You know, this bike here, I've ridden it with just 25mm uh, road tyres mm -hmm. and it works perfectly as a, as a sportive-style road bike. Right. Which is the other great thing about the carbon version. You can you put standard road tyres on, you know, you're building up a 7 a bit kilo bike and you've got a, a great road bike. Yeah. So a very versatile frame set. And these come in a range of builds as well. So we've got yeah, what, a, a SRAM rival one right here. Yeah. Uh, presumably there's a, a level below that if you're looking for something with yeah, a bit more value. So, so retail pricing starts at um, 1,600 pounds. Uh, that will get you a 105 Hydro group set. The model you see here is um, 1,800. Okay. And yeah, and so, and yeah, and for our bike builder that we have on our website, you can, you can spec it how you want to spec it to the price point you need and also yeah, with all the wheel options, you can you can build the bike to your 
um, ideal type of riding, whether it's commuting, on-road, off-road, endurance road riding. Yeah, it's, it's a really versatile bike. Fantastic. So that's the CGR, four different frame materials, uh, loads of different build options. And we're going to move on to something even more uh, off-road now. So if we look behind us, there's uh, some bike packing going on. Yeah. Tell me about this, this beast. <laughs> well, it's kind of taking the CGR philosophy, but taking it a step further. Um, one thing we wanted to do is we, we, uh, we, we get the adventure thing, we, get the, uh, we love the, the spirit adventure within the team, exploring, getting out there into the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And we really wanted a bike that you could, you could tour the world on it, you could do transcontinental, but quite equally you could go up into the Lake District and you could do a weekend away self-supported and it carries everything that you want to you take, take with you on it. And also, crucially, on-road, off-road, I say multiple wheel and tire options right the way up to a 650 up to 2.8. Right. So it really will handle anything. So you can get a really big tire in this, yeah, absolutely, in this machine. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. And um, this is a new frame for you, entirely new? A brand new, yeah. This, yeah. Is, this particular one is Reynolds 725 with a chrome molly fork and it comes with uh, an optional upgrade to a carbon fork. And then we have the same model also in titanium which comes standard with the carbon fork. Okay. That's really interesting. And what kind of pricing are we looking at for these? So retail price, this one starts at £1,200, okay. £1,200, and it goes upwards depending on the specification right. from there. With the build similar to this one, £1,200. Yeah. So that's the Ribble Adventure range. Uh, there's a 75, like I say, uh, titanium version from £1,200. Great if you're going to go somewhere remote. If you're not going to go somewhere remote, if you're just going to work, then we've got an urban range now as well, which again is new, yeah? Yeah, completely new. Completely right. new for this year. So... This bike, uh, lovely looking alloy frame, nice big Schwalbe tyres for the potholes in town, sensible looking rack. What's going on here? Is this, is this, uh, is this something that you see as a, a kind of a big, big growth area for Ribble? Yeah, I think so. So yeah, historically we've been very focused on the road um, side of the market. Whereas we, what, what we really want to do is we really want to offer that great design, attention to detail and great product with great value to a much broader audience, a much wider range of cyclists. And um, we feel that this, uh, the urban bike, covers that off. So it's a uh, very high grade uh, double butted aluminium frame with um, super smooth welds, with a matching um, integrated handlebar and stem as well. Uh, full carbon fibre fork, um, with a very high level uh, finishing kit. And yeah, and with branded Mavic wheel set and the um, SRAM NX 1x uh, gear setup, all in a package which would retail at 800 pounds. So it's about having a very premium urban style product with a great attention to detail and great design uh, features on it, uh, but again, at a great price point. Yeah, that, I mean, that's, that looks like a really good commuting bike for the money. And um, what have we got? A, a fairly big Schwabi tire on here, 40 mil? 38 mil G1. Yeah, yeah. but there's still room for a mud guard yeah, so in again, there as well. Same as the CGR platform, this will take up to 45s with guards. Yeah. Um, this is based around, so we've got the NX one by build or a Dior two by option. Right. And if you do want the mud guards, presumably you can spec them on the bike builder and you can get it supplied with them. That looks like a really nice bike for just hacking around town on or even get, you know, even going further afield, there's enough kind of yeah. there's enough capability there for a for minor bike packing, even if not major bike packing. So yeah, it looks like a really nice, really nice bike, really nicely finished. Jamie, here we are with the bike that started off this frame design. This is the SLR series. So tell me about this. How long has this been in development for? Pretty much about a year, really. Um, it started with the, the SL. So this is the high end, which is the SLR series. Okay. So the SLR series for a medium size like this comes in, the raw frame comes in just under 800 grams. Whereas the standard SL series, the SL is uh, um, around a, a kilo. Okay. And that's with a higher grade of carbon, slightly less of it. Yeah, it is. It's slight change. It's mainly the it is mainly the layout. Yeah, a right. bit more T1000 in this one. So, Andy, this is obviously um, a very high end product. Yeah. This is like professional racing kind of level. And now you have your own team. Yeah. So this is the bike that they'll be riding as from next year when it lands, presumably. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So yeah, the, the team have done an incredible year this year. Won over 100 races. They're ranked number one in the British Cycling rankings. So yeah, it, for us at Ribble, it's, it's a great time, and it's only, it's only fitting that we not only with the race team, but also with the calibre of uh, the team that works at Ribble, particularly Jamie, the former World Under-23 um, world champion. Um, it was only fitting really that we really start to really push the boundaries and the, the limits to what is what, what Ribble we can produce. So yeah, this is really our, 
uh, world world class um, top end race stroke real um, endurance uh, road platform. And Jamie, you must have spent a lot of time on board prototypes of this. So, what's your riding experience of it? It's everything I wanted, basically. That's the easiest way to obviously come with my background. It's been great developing all the bikes, but having raced bikes for years at, at the highest level, you know, this is it's, it's, it's my baby, should we say? It's the one that I knew what I wanted, you know, from the ground up, and it made it an exciting project. Mm, excellent. And when are we going to be seeing these available? Um, SLR series around November. Okay, yeah. so they're very close. Yeah, yeah, so pre -order, pre -orders, right, pre -orders uh, can be taken now yeah. with availability in November, yeah. Chris Christmas presents decided. Yeah, yeah. And if you haven't <laughs> quite got the money for the SLR, then we've got the SL as well. It's nice and high up. So, same frame design, slightly lower grade of carbon, slightly heavier, but effectively rides, I mean, in terms of the ride, very similar. Very similar, yeah. yeah. So obviously both, this is the caliper version, so obviously both the SL and the SLR series are both in disc and caliper. Okay. That's very interesting, and you've got a direct mount brake on right. there. Yeah, so the, the all disc models will take up to a 32 mil tyre, yeah. so we're running kind of 28s as a fairly standard, right. and then um, it'll take 28s on the caliper model. Okay. So plenty of room, they've all got um, hidden integrated mudguard mounts, so we've taken a race bike, but we've also given it that every day. And you've got this bike uh, with the K-Force wireless. Uh, is that a group set you could be offering on the bike builder or not? Uh, so we've been, we've been testing it and it's something we will, will look to possibly build into the bike builder yeah. uh, in the future. Okay, but not available quite yet. Not yet, no. Right. Um, and if even that's too much money, then we've got an alloy version as well. So this is 1,300 pounds in this build with full Shimano 105 hydraulic group set. Um, in terms of the geometry and in terms of the ride, you're trying to keep it as similar to the SL and the SLR as possible? Yes, yeah, so the geometry is exactly the same. Right. So the full, F, the full SL um, series, obviously, this is the top end and this is the, the entry level of the same platform. So, yeah. so you're getting the same geometry, so yeah. same kind of position and really good value. Um, yeah, it looks like a really nice bike and one that we're definitely going to try and get in on the Road CC for a, for a test. There's a lot of stuff here that we're, uh, we've got our eyes on. A lot of the aero features are trickled down as well from the uh, carbon frames into the aluminium frames. So you've still got the same aero fork uh, profile. Uh -huh. You've still got the truncated aero fork down tube as well. So Andy, you were saying that your first Ribble was a 725 framed uh, racer with a, with a Campagnolo group set. And here we have it, yeah. the yeah. new version. <laughs> yeah, mine was a little bit like this, probably not quite as good as this though. Yeah, so it's old 653 Ribble. They had the old Campag 9-speed chorus group set on it. Yeah, there's now uh, we're at 725, so it's lighter, stiffer, really nice frame, uh, full carbon fork, and it's got the uh, new Campag record 12-speed on it. So yeah, similar to the bike I had, but uh, a little bit more advanced. Yeah, we've, we've, we've moved, moved on, on, haven't we? I think I've moved on, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. But this is a really lovely looking bike. And um, how much for this build with the new 12-speed? Jamie? Oh. <laughs> Lots. Yeah. yeah, I don't think we've catch it. Archie build. Yeah, yeah I mean, the range starts at 1,100 pounds okay. for a Tiagra build on the 725 frame. Right. And then goes up to, uh, goes up to whatever this is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah within bike building. Yeah. It's, it's a really lovely, lovely looking bike. bike. It's come uh, out surprisingly light as well. It's 8.5 kilos as I've seen. Right. So for a steel bike, I know it's got a, a lovely yeah. group set, but it's still very light for a, a steel yeah, machine. It certainly is. Yeah, and it's, and also it's really good to see the you know, the traditional bike still being part of the, like an integral part of the range. Well, I think it's important because Ribble's been building bikes for over 120 years and we were, we've been building steel bikes for a, lot, a, lot, a, a significant portion of that time. So it's only right that we've got a high quality steel bike in our range. So we've moved over to the Ribble stand, have a look at a couple more bikes. And one of them is uh, this Ultra Tri. So this is a, a winning bike. You were saying that um, this, is a, this has been winning some, uh, some big races. Yeah, that's right. So Joe Skipper won the uh, National Ironman Championships on this bike. And he's also all set to be uh, representing Great Britain in the World Championships in Kona in Hawaii on the bike in, uh, in October. Yeah. So yeah. And again, as with most things Ribble, good value proposition. So the frame set at 1599 yep. and you can get a whole build for 2,200 pounds. So what, what kind of build is that? Yeah, so it's a super fast bike and yeah, a build starts at uh, 2,199 pounds. So that's a 105 group set with a, um, a, a vision, a wheel set. 
and uh, yeah, it's uh, with all the crucially it comes with all the uh, the kits for your hydration and for the storage of your uh, nutrition and any spares you want to take with you as well. It'll all come as standard on that bike for that price point. Okay, so this is the tri build, and there's also a TT version of this bike as well. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we are a TT specific and a tri specific, um, both based on the same frame platform, but with different fork options and in different um, elements of storage and yeah, and the uh, hydration system, for example. Yeah, the uh, the TT version comes in um, frame set only at one two nine nine, and complete bike start at two thousand pounds. A uh, two thousand pound bike uh, is with the one hundred five group set and the Vision wheel set. Great, so ready to roll for your TT straight out of the box. Yeah, super fast bike, we're winning races this year, so the uh, Liverpool Pro Cycling Team won the National 10 mile time, time trial championships on the bike, both the individual and the team. Um, the, team the team also broke the national competition record for 25 miles of the team as well. So it's a super fast bike, yeah, proven in the real world, uh, yeah, but, and also crucially at a, a great price point as well. And last but not least, it's cross season now, we've got your CX bike, so tell us a little bit more about um, this platform. Right, so this is our, our first uh, Alloy cyclocross bike, so we've got three builds on this, a Jaguar build, 105, and then a one by Apex build, as seen. Um, starts at 899 for a complete build. Uh -huh. um, all the latest all the latest modern cars, so we've got front and rear through axles, uh, flat mount discs, fully internal cable routing, um, full carbon monocoque fork. Uh -huh. um, clearance is actually for 40 mil tyres, but obviously under UCI ruling, doesn't need to go that big anyway, so plenty of clearance with a 33 mil tyre. Okay, so you're really looking at this as a cross racing bike, yeah? Yeah, well, it's, the price point sets it as definitely an entry level bike, but I would say performance wise, quality wise, you're definitely getting more than an entry level bike. Yeah, and if you do want to use it for something else, if you want to use it for commuting, then there's, there's mud guard mounts, exactly, yeah. and it's, it's more versatile than just a race bike. Exactly. Oh, great, yeah, that looks the, really good. The build that we see it in now as well is the 1100 pounds with the uh, full Shram Apex one by group set as well, so okay. ready to race. Yeah, and great, it looks like the kind of bike I'd be turning up to race at across, across the thing. I mean, I'm, I'm no great shakes, but it's good to have a, a bike that looks good and that works well. And the one by I think is really good for cyclocross, so yeah, fantastic. It's like good value. Okay, so that's the new Ribble range. As you can see, it's a really big range of bikes. It's, it's expanded hugely from, from what you might expect. Um, thanks to Andy and to Jamie, showing us around the bikes. Um, not all of them are available to buy straight away, but you can pre-order all of the bikes at the moment on ribblecycles.co.uk and the bikes will be landing November and December. Yeah. So all of them will be ready soon. Thanks for your time. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe for more like this on Road CC. If you've got any questions about any of these bikes, just ask them and we'll get them answered in the comments below. Thanks for watching.